A very good evening uh, to you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. So we thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, our uh, Heavenly Father for giving this wonderful opportunity to sit and discuss uh, the wonderful words of life with you. So today we are going to study about uh, harvest uh, in the Bible. So we all know, we all have seen so many things happening in the field. You see, especially the harvest is a very important thing, a very important element, you see, in the uh, agriculture field. So, today, we are going to see some harvest things in the Bible. See, when we do harvest, there are three things that happen. Sir. One is the separation. You see, second is the gathering of the fruit. The third is the burning of the waste. So, these are three things uh, that happen. The separation between the fruit and the waste. And the gathering of the, all the waste and burning of the, you see, the waste. So, does Bible speak uh, about harvest, if you see, yes, Bible speaks about harvest. So, where do we read that one? It is given to us in Matthew 9, chapter 37 and 38. Uh, Emmanuel Budar, good evening, welcome. Uh, how are you? Hope you are doing good. Uh, can you read the Bible verses, brother? Are you okay? Emmanuel, brother, can you read all the Bible verses? Uh, brother, I will try to read. My sound will be quite disturbing. Okay. You are traveling? Yes. Okay. Because uh, uh, all the other brethren are not able to read uh, so due to some health issues. So I think you need to read. If you are not able to read, you can tell me. I will read the verses also. If you are comfortable, you can read. Or else uh, I will continue reading the verses. Okay. I will read it from the screen room. Yeah, please, please, Emmanuel, please. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are laborers are few. Pray ye therefore for the Lord of the harvest that he will send for laborers into his harvest. So here Jesus tells uh, that you pray to the Lord that uh, he may send the uh, laborers into his harvest. Uh, Jesus said, uh, you see. Uh, the harvest is plenty, laborers of you. And uh, what was Jesus speaking here? Did uh, Jesus have any field? Uh, did he do any harvest? You see, Jesus definitely is not speaking about a little uh, harvest because we all know very well that Jesus never had any field or any wealth or any property in this earth. So, Jesus was giving a lesson to us. So, what lessons do you have from this uh, harvest? If you see, the Bible speaks about three harvest. You see, when do the harvest take place? We all know very well. Harvest is actually happens at the end, not at the beginning of the cultivation. So, in uh, each every age, at the end of each and every age, there is a harvest that happens. Therefore, at the end of Jewish age, there is a harvest. There is the end of the gospel age, there is a harvest. End of the million age, there is harvest. So, each and every age at the end, uh, there is a harvest that happens. Now, let us take some time and uh, read about these three harvest, three ages, uh, three harvest. Okay. Now, first we will take uh, the Jewish age harvest. Okay. Now, Jewish age harvest, where it is mentioned? It is mentioned in Matthew 3rd chapter, verse 12. Uh, Binar brother, welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, can you read the verses, brother? Okay, sir, I will read. Okay, please tell me what which verse. Matthew 3.12. You can even read from the screen also. Yes, okay. Uh, Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 3.12. Whose fan is in his hand and he will truly for his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unkillable fire. See, here uh, John the Baptist uh, is mentioning about the work actually Jesus is going to do. That Jesus is having a fan in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat and burn the chaff to unquenchable fire. Now here, you see John the Baptist not literally speaking about any literal harvest which Jesus is going to make. 
Jesus was actually, you see, uh, quoting about uh, the Jewish uh, people. John the Baptist was giving reference about what Jesus is going to do in midst of the Jewish nation. Therefore, we all know very well that uh, the writers are compared to the trees in the Bible. You see, the Israel as a nation was the writers' uh, people in the sight of God because they were offering sacrifices to God. You see, in Psalms 1, 1 also, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He shall be like a tree planted by the uh, waters uh, which give forth uh, fruit in due season. So Israel as a nation was a blessed people. They were right as people. But once uh, they violated God's uh, commandments uh, and walked away from God, you see, then what happened was that uh, God's wrath came upon them. You see, and that is when John the Baptist mentioned like this. Uh, what did he mention? Read Matthew 3.10. Matthew 3.10, brother. Uh, Binar, brother. Can you probably read all the verses? Because all the brethren are... Uh... Okay, sir. Uh, which verse, sir? Hmm. Matthew 3.10, brother. Okay. And now also the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which uh, bringeth not forth good fruit is uh, hewn down and cast into the fire. Amen. You see? See, yes, yes. You see, therefore, every tree that bringeth forth not any fruits, it should be cast onto fire. Here, Jesus was not speaking about any literal tree. Here again, it was speaking about the Jewish nation, the righteous people. And cutting them off and putting them to fire means not literally fire. You see, because a nation was compared to a tree, then definitely fire also should be compared to not literal fire, but the wrath of God. So Israel people, uh, they were warned that if they don't repent and if they don't turn to God, what would, what will happen? Huh? They had to face the wrath of God. You see, dear brethren, therefore, you see, John the Baptist clearly, you see, warned the Pharisees and Sadducees who came to, you see, get baptized. You see, what did he say? Huh? That uh, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, the fire to come? Read. What seven brother? Matthew 3, 7 brother. Okay, sir. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptize, baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, whom, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Uh -huh. You see? Huh? So here... John the Baptist is seeing the Pharisees and Sadducees, the Israel nation, the people among Israel nation, telling, telling him, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Uh -huh. That means what? Here, the fire is compared to God's wrath. So, if you don't obey God, what will happen? You will be put into God's wrath. See, after mentioning this one, see, John the Baptist continues to tell what Jesus is going to do. You see, and he tells, I indeed baptize you with water. What will Jesus come and do? He will come and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, it seems. Read verse 11, brother. Huh? Okay, sir. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he, ha uh, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire is himself. Now what is this the baptism of Holy Spirit and baptism of fire? You see, so many people think uh, that uh, baptism of Holy Spirit and baptism of fire are one and the same. If they are one and the same, why would... Uh, you see, John the Baptist say he will baptize with the fire and with the Holy Ghost. He could have mentioned clearly he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, fire, no? Why that uh, two separate, uh, you see, is mentioned? Definitely, then uh, two separate things are there. See, water baptism. You see, water baptism is what? You see, what will happen if you are baptized in the water? You are completely immersed in the water. So what will happen if you go inside the water and if you are baptized totally? 
you will totally be soaked in water. You will be totally wet in water. You see, so similarly, if somebody is baptized with the Holy Spirit, what will happen? He will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, he will be a Spirit-filled man. Isn't it? So similarly, if somebody is uh, baptized with fire, now what does it mean? It means that uh, he will be totally immersed in fire. If somebody is completely immersed in fire, what will happen? He will burn out. Therefore, your brethren, here Jesus was not telling that I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit fire. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Baptism of Holy Spirit was a separate thing. And baptism of fire was a separate thing. Now, to whom did Jesus mention that he will baptize with the Holy Spirit? And to whom did Jesus mention that he will baptize with the fire? You see, let us read Matthew 3rd chapter 12th verse. Matthew 3.12. Uh. Okay. Matthew 3.12. Whose fan is in hand? And he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn off the chaff with the uncusable fire. Ah, here see, here the reference is given. You see, after verse 11, verse 12 continues to tell what will be that fire, the baptism of fire and to whom it will be. You see, here it tells uh, Jesus is having a fan in his hand. He will thoroughly park the floor and divide the wheat from the chaff. So two separations will happen, wheat and the chaff. Now, uh, did Jesus really, literally separated wheat and chaff? No, we all know very well. Jesus never did literally take a fan and separate the wheat and the chaff. You see, then what does it mean now? For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. Here a little, there it will search the scriptures and see. Actually, when Jesus came, there were actually two types of people in Israel. You see, one people were the like the chaff, only outwardly. Nothing was there inside. You see, the chaff usually will be empty. You see, just a covering upon the wheat and inside nothing will be there. You see, those type of people were there. They were like the chaff. We all know very well that these were the Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, lawyers, uh, Priest, high priest, uh, scribes, uh, but they were also the wheat class people who were the real grain, who were the real weight, uh, who waited upon the Lord, dear brethren. Uh, these were the disciples of Jesus. These had real weight. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, you see, when Jesus came to this earth, there were two types of Israel, uh, two types of people among Israelites. Uh, you see, now, let us see who are these two types, okay? Now, as soon as uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel, what did Jesus say to Nathaniel? He said, you are the true Israelite. You are the Israelite indeed. Isn't it? Let us read uh, John 147, brother. John 147. Okay, John 147. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite, Israel indeed, in whom is no Israel. Yes. Ah, that means what? A real Israelite who has no hypocrisy. The real love was there in him. That means what? A real Israelite means duplicate Israel is also there, dear brethren. So two types of Israel are there. The true Israel were the wheat class. The duplicate Israel were the, you see, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they were the chaff class of people. Remember what Jesus told to the Pharisees and Sadducees? Who unto you, Pharisees and Sadducees? You see, huh? you are like what? You are like a whitewashed sepulchre. They are only outwardly beautiful, but inwardly, nothing was there. You see, sepulchre, the grave. How is it? You see, I don't know about in Nepal, but in India, all the graves are usually whitewashed. You see, white paint painted. You see, it looks beautifully outside, but inside, inside and all only bones. Nothing is there. This was the condition about the false Jewish people at the first advent of Christ. These were the chaff day brother. They did not have the real grain inside. The real faith from inside. 
ರೀಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಮ್ಯಾಥ್ಯೂ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಬ್ಯಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಪ್ಯಾರಿಸಿಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಹಿಪೋಕ್ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ painted white outside they look fine but inside they are full of dead people's ah. bones and all kinds of filth ah filth uh, you see how is the grave nicely decorated outside but if you open they can't even stand their stink that was the condition of the pharisees and sadducees they were only decorated outward is the light Jesus told so many things about them in Matthew 23rd chapter. When you are free, please read it. Or else when I share the PDF, you can go through it. A lot of details are there. Jesus said, uh, you wash the cup outside, but inside is full filthiness. So these were the two class of people that were there when Jesus came. Now, what did Jesus do? Jesus did the separation using a fan in his hand. Now, what is the fan? What is the thing that separated these two class of people? it is the word of god the bible bible was used to separate these two class of people therefore you remember when jesus spoke the first time in the temple you see many people were surprised seeing the words of jesus oh so beautiful his words are but after a little bit of time what happened huh the israelite people began to kill him who pharisees the sadducees the priest and the high priest read luke 422 brother luke 4 chapter 22 okay and all the bear him witness and wonder at the gracious word which proceeded proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not his joseph son uh-huh. you see all bear witness about him the wonderful gracious words that came everybody appreciated who the wheat class appreciated what about tears tears thought of killing jesus christ same chapter read verse 28 to 30 brother ha huh. okay and all they in the synagogue when they heard this thing were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong but he passing through the midst of them went his way ah uh, you see he <laughs> some people appreciated but other people thought him to push from the hill make him fall from the hill it seems sir you see so that was the va chaff class so these two classes got separated by the doctrine of jesus christ remember you see uh, what was the opposition of uh, pharisees and sadducees sir? many people came and complained to oh, your teaching false teaching sir you see many people came and told oh have any of the pharisees believed oh fellow who are you who gave you the authority to teach isn't it So, so many things uh, that oppose to Christ. Let us read a few verses. Uh, John 7, chapter 46 to 48. Uh. Okay. John 7, 46 to 48. Hmm. The official answer, neighbor man spec, spec like his man. Then answer, then the Pharisees are here also deceived. have any of the rulers or of the pharisees believe on him huh? none of the pharisees or the rulers believed on jesus but the ordinary people believed you see therefore they said never man speak like this he is speaking so wonderfully the truth is beautiful wonderful isn't it you see but uh, what happened because of uh, the fear that they will be thrown out of the temple many people 
did not follow Jesus openly because they feared these leaders. Read John 12 chapter 42 and 43, brother. Okay. John 12, 42, 43. Neighbor themselves, neighbor then less. Among the chief ruler also, many believe on him. But because of the Pharisees, they didn't confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Mm. For they love the uh, praise of the men more than the praise of God. No, oh, they fear that they will be thrown out of synagogue. Then what will happen if you go out from the say, temple? Nobody will dare to care us because they huh, feared. You see, men than God. So this way, the you see, Pharisees and Sadducees. Now you tell me, now Jesus, what did he do? He oriented uh, the wheat class with God's Holy Spirit on the Pentecost day. Holy Spirit came upon the church. You see, uh, they were all, uh, you see, uh, believed in Christ and followed the footsteps of Christ. They were baptized in Christ. But what about the Pharisees and Sadducees? They were anointed with the Holy Spirit. Uh. They were anointed with fire. The wrath of God came upon you, Israel. Israel as a nation was totally destroyed in 70 AD. See, the Jewish nation was destroyed. This, uh, you see, baptism of fire came upon this Israel. But uh, the real disciples of Christ were baptized with God's Holy Spirit. Read 1 Thessalonians 2nd chapter 15 and 16, brother. Okay, first question okay. to 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have the prosecute us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, providing us to speak to the Gentiles that they might, do, uh, might be saved to fill up their sin always. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Oh, the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. You see, God's wrath came upon Israel and Israel was totally destroyed in 70 days. So this is the Jewish age harvest. So what happened? Two type people were there. They were separated. One group of people were anointed with God's Holy Spirit. Other people were anointed with the God's wrath, fire and destroy. Okay, now this is the Jewish age harvest. So next, uh, what happened? The gospel age harvest began. So Jesus mentioned about the gospel age harvest in Matthew 13 chapter 24 to 30. Okay, now let us read this one. Uh, brother, read 24 to 30, brother. Hmm. Okay, sir. Just give me one minute, sir. No problem. Uh, okay, okay. Another parable put forth unto them, saying, mm. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field from wains? Then had it tears. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while he gather up the tears, he reap up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather it together for the tears, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Very good. See, here Jesus tells about this parable. And Jesus actually explained this parable from verse 37 to 43. We are not going to read the explanation. You kindly you can read everybody after the class is over. But let us see what actually Jesus explained here. You see, Jesus explained that a son, uh, you see, a man, uh, you see, what happened? He, said, so he, uh, he spoke a parable, the kingdom of heaven like a, like a man that sowed a good seed in his field. And Jesus in this parable explains uh, that the good seed uh, is the word of God. You see, and the field is the world. So, here uh, the sower uh, is actually the Jesus uh, and the apostles. Uh, they began to sow the God's word, the truth, all over the world. You see, the field, you see, very beautiful field, all where, what happened? Uh, good seed was sowed. But the seed that was sown was actually wheat field. 
But what happened? It seems uh, once when the all the servants slept, uh, you see what happened? It seems uh, the enemy came in sword. What is seems? Uh, you see, tears among the wheat. It seems uh, now who is this enemy? You see, Jesus mentions in the parable that the enemy is the devil. The servants here are the apostles and all. When apostles died, what happened? Uh, Satan took a upper hand uh, and he showed uh, what? Uh, uh, you see, he showed the tears among uh, where? Among uh, you see the wheat where it was already sowed. Now, you see, dear brethren, uh, as soon as uh, you see this one happens uh, in the morning, if you see what happened, uh, full tears had come up. Uh, the disciples go and ask uh, uh, Master, Master, shall we remove the Tears. What is Jesus say? No, don't remove. If you remove now, what will happen? Even the true wheat also will come out. Let it grow together. No problem. But uh, when the harvest comes, uh, there we will first gather the wheat and uh, do the separation. Don't worry. Now Jesus clearly mentions in the parable that the wheat are the children of God and the tears are the children of the devil. You see, Satan is very clever. Now, where did he do this uh, sowing of the uh, children of Satan, sowing of the tears? They were already, you see, the what was sown? They were already, the wheat was sown. Apostles did a lot of, uh, you see, hard work and sowed the truth all over the world. But Satan, as soon as the apostles and all died, he sowed in between them, not among the Hindus or Muslims, among the Christians only, he sold, he sold these false Christians based on the false truth. Many Christians who don't believe the truth, you see, they have grown to become the good tares. This all began when Constantine, emperor of Rome, got converted to Christianity. Then what happened? Slowly false doctrines began to crept into the church. Hell, hell is a place of torment. Soul, soul doesn't die. Soul is immortal. It is there in hell or heaven or purgatory. If you give offerings here, what will happen? Immediately your soul will be transferred from here to, you see, heaven. Uh, you see, then uh, the Lord's memory supper, Good Friday. Jesus died on Good Friday. But how come every year it comes a Friday? You see, nobody began to question that one. Everybody began to follow the Good Friday. Uh, calling oneself as bishop, father, reverend. Well, Jesus clearly said, call no man as father. And doing the Lord's memorial. When? Weekly ones, monthly ones. Some church, they do it every day. Morning, evening and afternoon. What does the Bible say? The Lord's Supper has to be celebrated only once a year. Dear brethren. You see, Easter. Where does the Bible say about Easter? No Easter at all. Bible itself is not there, dear brethren. In those days, only commit sin, confess to the Father, all your sins will be forgiven. Then, tongues, miracles, huh? speaking in language which nobody can understand, they came to speaking to God. Where in the Bible it says that you are speaking to God in such a way? You see, God knows all the languages, uh, dear brethren. So, tongues was actually understandable language. We have seen that one in very last few weeks. Dear brethren. So, what happened? Based on this truth, you see, who began to develop among Christians, uh, the false Christians, they commit all sins, you see, and uh, go and confess to the Father. Drinking, smoking, adultery, fornication, you see, marriage, divorce, you see, everything, uh, you see, wearing vulgar clothes, uh, which are not permitted uh, by the Bible. Uh. So what happened? You see, dear brethren, you see, uh, the wheat field began to be a tear field. There was no wheat at all. Wherever you see, what is there? It seems only tear, tear, tear. Therefore, if somebody tells you we are Christian, everybody will look cheaply. Why? Because Christians are the people who don't wear proper clothes. You see, they put only only half of clothes. They all expose. You see, and they don't have discipline. They commit all sin, go to the God and confess their sin. Father, you see, but. Uh, this would not actually what the Bible says. So, so what happened was that uh, among the true wheat, majority tears came up. If you see, early in the morning, only tears had come up. Wheat was not there at all. So today, that is what has happened. You see, among them also there is Bible study. But Bible study is done in such a way that uh, no questions come up. 
No new things come up. You see, just keep on telling the same old thing, dear brethren. Therefore, what has happened? Uh, this wheat field began to uh, be a tear field. Now, how do we identify the difference between the wheat and the tear? You see, you can see in the photo, both are one and the same. You see, both looks the same. The only difference between wheat and tear is that wheat has grain. You see, that is very, very, you see, nutritious. While the tears as grain, but it is very poisonous. You see, and the wheat grain is very heavy against the, you see, what happens? The wheat plant actually boasts like this one. You see, but the tears are very strict. They don't have a weighty grain in them. It's very stiff. Even if the wind blows, it doesn't shake, it doesn't bend at all. And what do you mean by this one, this one, the wheat are the class of people who bow down to the wind, who are heavy, whose speech is heavy, whose character is heavy. You see, heavy in the Lord, filled with the God's Holy Spirit. You see, these are the Christians who obey God's word, who surrender to this wind. Wind in the Bible means doctrines. Deep in Ephesians 4.14 says, Henceforth, be not children, tossed to and fro, carried about every wind of doctrine. Wind of doctrine. So once the wind of doctrine blows, dear brethren, God's children should surrender. But the tears, no, they won't surrender. They are very stiff. They are very strict. They don't want to bow to the Lord at all. They are stiff. Stiff-necked Christians, they never obey the word of God. So these are the two types of people that are there today in this world. Now what did Jesus say? Huh? Don't pluck. Don't separate in between. We will do the separation when? In the harvest. Now, what is happening in the harvest? What happens? You see, Jesus separates the wheat from the tares. Now, therefore, you see, now we are living in the time of the harvest. We are not living in the time of sowing. Sowing was done when Jesus was there, when apostles were there. You see, that time, what happened? Apostles gone over all over the world. Thomas came to India. Britishers were there. A lot of activities happened. But now, the seed has grown up and begun to a big plant. Now it is gathering of the, you see, fruit. So many Christians don't even understand this one and go and do. Uh, start sowing now. Go to villages, remote places. You see, go and tell them the gospel. You see, what did Jesus say? Huh? Did Jesus say like that or not? Jesus said, cast not your, you see, huh? the thing which is holy to dogs. You see, cast not the pearls before the swine. They will trample it. Uh, dear brethren, we should be very careful. Read Matthew 7, 6. Matthew 7, 6, brother. Hmm. Okay, give sir. not that which is ah, okay. give not ah. that which is only unto the dogs, neither cast your poles before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend them. Ah, you see, cast not the holy. God's words is very holy. It is like a precious pearl. Don't put it on the uh, front of the swine and the dog. They don't know the value. Dear brother, now is not the time of converting the world. Now is the time of harvesting. Now there is no British government or English government who supports Christianity. But everywhere there are other governments. You see, they don't support. They oppose it. God's children should be wise enough. Now what did Jesus say? How, how we should be? Read Matthew 10. You see, 16. Uh, Binar brother, can you read Matthew 10, 16? Okay. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ear, therefore wise as serpent and harmless as dove. Ah, wise as serpents, harmless as dove. We should not never go boldly and take persecutions, beatings and all and tell, oh, this brings glory to God. No. How many times did Jesus get beatings? Not even once, only at the final stage. Every time somebody came to beat him, he escaped. Read from the Bible. You see, therefore, we should be wise as serpents, harmless as dove. Now is not the period of sowing. Now is the period of reaping. Now is not the period of going converting the whole world. You see, everybody knows about Jesus. You see, now is not the period of converting. Now is the time of harvest. Many of the Christians, they themselves don't know the Bible. 
so many things uh, there in the bible we should go and teach them the word of god everyan therefore here in christianity today there are two classes of people you see who are the two classes of people who are the people who accepted jesus as the first advent ordinary people accepted but who opposed the leaders the pharisees the sadducees the leaders of the temple so similarly who accept the truth if you see it is a common people accept the truth but who are the people who oppose you see jesus now it is uh, the leaders the pastors the reverends the fathers of today you see these are the people who oppose the truth today dear brethren you see the oppose the truth of what soul you see hell three worlds ransom how to study the bible you see why god permits evil you see a huh? lot of things are there no the lord's memorial supper you see the tongues miracles these are the things that are opposed by whom dear brethren by opposed by the pastors and the leaders the common man has nothing to do with they are very much happy if everybody are saved but these people they tell oh they should be saved now only or else if they don't accept what we tell they should go to hell where does the bible say See, God has made a plan that uh, to save everybody. Everybody will come back in the resurrection day of the end. Therefore, you see, these are the two types of people that are being separated. You see, now, okay, now, how does uh, you see Jesus do the separation? The first time he had the fan in his hand, he blew the fan. He separated. That is the word of God. So similarly, now Jesus has a sickle to do the harvest. Where is it given? Let us read Revelation fourteen chapter fourteen to sixteen. Revelation fourteen chapter fourteen to sixteen. Emmanuel, brother, uh, are you able to read? Is it okay for you to read? Okay, brother, I will read it from the screen. Yeah, please. Revelation fourteen fourteen to sixteen. Hmm. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like. to the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe and he that sat on the cloud thrust his, his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped aha uh -huh. see trust in the sickle for the harvest has come the time for the harvest has come so jesus is now doing the harvest with a sharp sickle what is sharp sickle again it is the word of god you see the word of god is like a double edged sword you see what happens sir when it smites it divides the family member father from you see son Uh, daughter from uh, mother, daughter-in-law from uh, mother-in-law, husband and wife. Uh, that is the separation. That is the power of the truth, dear brethren. So this is what uh, is Jesus is doing now. This is what is happening now. So this is uh, you see the second harvest, uh, dear brethren. Now we are living in the harvest period, where uh, you see the separation is happening therefore jesus mentioned about this one in matthew 13 chapter 41 to 43 also where we see the explanation at the end of the parable you see at the last god will do this separation through the angels the god's children who are the angels okay now the third harvest you see now where does the third harvest come the third harvest is mentioned to us in matthew 25 chapter 31 to 41 okay now Binor Buddha, can you read Matthew twenty five thirty one to forty one? Okay, sir. Hmm. Uh, Matthew twenty five thirty one to forty one. When the Son of the Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angel with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all the nation. and he shall separate them on from other as a shepherd divide his sheep from the goat and he shall sit the sheep of his right hand but say but the goat on the left 
then shall be the king say unto them unto them on his right hand come a bless of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was and hunger and it gave me meat i was thirsty and it gave me drink i was a stranger and it took me in naked and it clothed me i was sick and it visited me i was in prison and they came in unto me then shall the righteous answer him saying lord when so we thee and hunger and feed thee or thirsty and give thee drink when so we thee a stranger and look thee in or naked and clothe thee or when so we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you as much as much as I have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye yeah, all done it unto me then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me a cross into everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angel amen very good brother thank you so here you see he says uh, jesus uh, you see <laughs> shall uh, do the separation of the wheat from the we say sorry from the uh, sheep from the goat you see the separation of uh, sheep from the goat here again separation the harvest you see here jesus says uh, that uh, i was hungry you came and gave me food i was thirsty you came and gave me water you see i was naked you came and clothed me you see i was sick you came and uh, you see uh, nurtured me nursed me i was in the prison house you came and visited me you see so many things then uh, you see uh, the sheep or the goat asked the lord uh, master when did we do all these things to you jesus says whatever you have done to the least of these members it is like doing to me you see so therefore you see uh, many people they are so you see happy to do it uh, to the poor today uh, because uh, they think that uh, if you do to the poor it is doing to the lord so therefore you see lot of uh, hospitality work is been done giving food to the poor you see giving water uh, to the you see the thirsty people uh, building home for the age uh, you see taking care of the sick people uh, you see building orphanage uh, because i was stranger you took in in uh, and uh, going and doing the jail ministry you see going preaching to the prisoners why because uh, Yes, Jesus says, so if you are doing this to them, it is like doing this to me. They think that they are doing to Jesus Christ. Okay. Now actually, this scripture, when is it applicable? We all know very well. So some scriptures are applicable in a particular time, not at every time. We have studied, how to study the Bible. We have at least seen that uh, there is a contextual study. There is a time application of the study. and means each and every scriptures are applicable for a particular time not to, you can't apply the same for entire time you see okay then this scripture is applied to which time let us read matthew 25 31 brother read matthew 25 31 brother please anybody okay 21 uh, 31 when the son of the man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit open the throne of its glory amen you see when will this happen in him sir this will happen when the son of man shall come in his glory when he shall come again second coming in his glory when he shall sit upon the throne of his glory that means this will happen when jesus second advent happens dear brother not now when jesus sits on the throne of his glory at the second advent then only this thing will happen this won't happen now so this can't be applied to now at all dear brother if this was applied uh, think and tell me how many times has jesus done this work not even once jesus has never done any of these things at all dear brother did he visit the jail to teach to barabasa huh? 
Uh, how many times has he visited uh, the home for the age or reconstructed the home for the age or orphanage? No, dear brethren. Uh, do you think there was no orphanage? No orphans there? There were orphans, but Jesus never gave money any to anybody. Dear brethren, only to the 4,000, 5,000, he gave food only once or twice. That's all. Not every time, dear brethren. So, uh, this scripture is not applicable now. This is a parable. You see, Therefore, in this parable, Jesus is comparing uh, the people to a sheep, the people to goat. That means the two types of people were divided. Uh, you see, the world before him at the second advent, when he returns, uh, you see, uh, there are two types of people will be in the world. One will be like the goat class, other will be like the wheat class. So the truth will be given to the whole world. We have studied about this one in very detail in many classes. So those people who accept the truth and obey the truth and walk as per the truth, you see, dear brethren, you see, they will uh, be the, what class of people are? They will be the, you see, eh? a sheep class. But those who don't obey, they will be what? Uh, they will be the uh, goat class. Many people think they will go to hell and heaven. Uh, that is, that the Bible says hell and heaven. Uh. No, no. They never went to hell and heaven. You see, let us read, where did they go? Read Matthew 25, 34, brother. 25, 34, brother. Huh? Okay. Uh, 25, 34. Uh, then shall the king uh, said unto them on his right hand, Come, a blessed of my father, narrate the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. Come Amen. and inherit the kingdom. Jesus never said, Come and come to heaven, you sit next to me. No. Inherit the kingdom, prepare for the foundation of the world. What did Jesus taught us to pray? Thy kingdom come on earth. It has come on earth only. So it will be done only on earth only. So all these things will happen only on earth. Dear Not that uh, you, some people go to hell or heaven. So when Christ returns, the truth, the Bible will be given to all mankind. They have to show the character. Some people will be like sheep. Well, some people will be like God. Huh? From Adam till Jesus' second advent, all the people who are ever lived or all dead, they will come back to life, dear brethren, back to life on the same earth. You see, but how the people come? Many people will be hungry. Many people will be thirsty. Many people will be naked. You see, what? This is not literal. Hungry means what? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is hungry. Every word will be hungry for God's words. God's words has to be taught to them. You see, huh? they will be thirsty for living waters. You see, dear brethren, and uh, what did Jesus say? He that is uh, thirsty, let him come and freely drink the living waters, dear brethren. So that will be given to them. And uh, I was stranger, you took me him. Uh, I had no clothes, you came and clothed me. What does it mean, clothes? Uh? Clothes means robe of righteousness. All our uh, righteousness is a filthy rags. In thousand years, all the people will come. You see, everybody will be naked. Not literally naked, but they don't have Jesus Christ. Then people will be teaching them to accept Jesus Christ. And wear this robe of righteousness. That is the robe that will be given in Christ's kingdom. And uh, when I was sick, uh, you came and visited me. You see, when I was naked, you came and clothed me. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. What does it mean? It's all not literal. Uh, Jesus said, uh, uh, the sick need the doctor. Sin sickness. All the people who come back in the resurrection will all be sin sick. They will all be addicted to sin. Drinking, smoking, telling lies. All these things has to be removed from them. This work and activity, this helping them work only, the church is going to do with Christ for a thousand years. Now, you see, huh? in that one, some people will obey the master, some people will not obey the master. So what will happen to the people who obey the master? Read that verse again, Matthew 25, 34. Matthew 25, 34. Uh, Okay, Matthew 24, 25, 20, 34. 34. Then the say unto them on his right hand, come a bless of my father, 
inherit the kingdom prepared for all you for you from the foundation of the world right hand uh, right hand means what a very important place chief favor uh, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world where in heaven on this earth the earth so they will all be in earth you see as adam was given the dominion over the earth the whole mankind of the sheep class who developed a beautiful sheep class character will be given the dominion of this earth but what about the goat class where where uh, shall they go read matthew 25 41 matthew 25 41 mm. 25:41 then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye crossed into everlasting fire prepare for the devil and his angels prepare for devil and his angels devil and his angels what fire god has prepared for devil and angels they will be tormented forever no dear brethren god has no use of tormenting the devil what is the use of preserving him he shall be destroyed in second death read revelation chapter 20 verse 14 what is this uh, lake of fire what okay. is this everlasting fire for it and the dead and the hell were cast in the lake of fire this is the second death this is the second death second death dear brother they will all be destroyed in second death means no coming back that is the meaning of second death dear brother therefore you see this is the three harvest first harvest happened in the end of the jewish age second uh, harvest is happening now in the end of the gospel age the third harvest uh, is going to happen at the end of a thousand years so in this three harvest all the mankind will be purified uh, separated good from the bad will be separated the good and all will be you see on the god side all the wicked and the evil people will be destroyed dear brethren so this is the subject of the three harvest uh, i'll send the pdf please go through it any doubts any questions anybody has please you can ask anybody any questions any doubts peter brother krishna brother i'm okay thank you brother praise god for it peter brother any questions any doubts Binod brother, Emmanuel brother, any questions brother? Nothing sir, it is awesome message sir. Okay, thank you. Lord bless.